Yes, Archer. I love you too, baby girl. I just love watching her eat. I don't know why it's different and cool. Oh, she's done. She's gonna go sun a little bit. Yes, Archer, you are the most important dog in the entire world. There. That makes you happy, I know. Okay, Rob, enjoy your little sun. We are currently vacuum hunting. I want a vacuum for upstairs only because it is a pain in the neck to go up and down the stairs. Okay, so now we are looking at the Roomba as well because the price is down a little bit. And this is what we have in the cart right now. We think. Okay, so we <laughs> bought two, not one, but two uh, vacuums. And we're here in our Mini Cooper. Brilliant planning. Worked. Everything fit. Okay, here she is. It is the shark version of the Roomba. And, oh, there it is. So excited. I hope it works as well. My husband has been, and this is his hand right there getting the uh, thing out. He has been wanting a Roomba forever. And we really have always had super good luck with the shark products. So we decided to try it. The price, was it better? It was like $40 cheaper, I think, too, which is always good. Ooh, what are those little things? What are these little blue things? Oh, it's a little brush. Seriously, you have to put it to get, like you have to put the brushes on it? That's weird. Anyway, maybe extras, maybe extras yeah. So here it is, so exciting. I'll uh, take another video when it is up and running. Okay, here's part two of our vacuum journey. This is uh, the Shark Rocket. I'm so excited. Here's the pictures on the side. What we were after is something that would clean our new couch really well, like that picture right there, because fur, fur. And also um, lots of fur. Look at the fur, look at that, look, chunks. And we call her rear end, we say it's her butt feathers because that's what they look like. Anyway, all the different ways that you can use this looked right up our alley. Here it is, our new vacuum. Here's the dog. The reason we have the new vacuum. My husband said it sucks. So that's what you want in a vacuum. It has super bright lights. Okay, so in true man form, what are you doing now? Oh, my husband has dumped out all the crap we just sucked up to see how good the vacuum really is. So like, like twice baked potatoes, that was twice sucked up dog hair. And just FYI, that was three stairs and a rug that I had already vacuumed this morning. This is our dog hair filled life. It's your fault. Okay, quick funny story to share. It has to do with our vacuum um, palooza that we had this weekend, past weekend. Um, when we were in the Walmart shopping for our vacuums, um, something kind of funny happened. So we get up to the counter to purchase that and we had like four other things in the cart. Not any big deal. Um, I had some folders and a couple other things. We get up to the counter and one of Katie's friends uh, who she's known forever and they played basketball together is working that day. And she came up to us and said, did you notice a guy with a hat following you around in the store? My husband and I were like, 
no, we didn't. Why? Something going on. And I thought maybe like he was a bad guy, right? Somebody that they were concerned about. No, apparently we were sketchy as heck. And the guy in the hat was following us around because he is an undercover security guy. And he walked up to, her name is Bree. He walked up to Bree and said, I'm following those two around, or I, I'm, I'm keeping an eye on those two. We were those two. So apparently my middle-aged self and my husband looked sketchy as heck in our masks walking around with two vacuums. I don't know. Anyway, Katie uh, thought that was a pretty hilarious story and we did too. We called her right away when we left Walmart. Apparently this security guy is a little overzealous, so maybe we're not quite as sketchy as we think we might be. But just wanted to share that funny story. There are security people out there don't steal vacuums. We were not. I promise. Hi, bro. You're kind of hanging out in your hammock today, I see. Much good. Lazy summer day for Monroe. Hi. You're so cute. Got any tricks to show us today? Yeah, I'm still talking. I'm still talking to you. Do you have any tricks to show us today? Hmm? Anything exciting you could talk about? Not really. Okay. I'll come back in a little bit and you'll still probably be sitting right here. I am so excited. I'm here at my uh, hair place to get my hair colored. It's been eight weeks and yeah, super excited. Hello, I am back from getting my hair done. It's so exciting to have no gray for a few minutes anyway. Um, I thought today I would come on and do just a little bit. I'm going to try to scoot out of the way of the ring. I have it holding up my camera though, so I can't really, but that's okay. I was going to do a little bit of a book review. Um, now this one I've talked about quite a bit, but I've never actually, uh, talked about it after I read it. So very quickly, and if you know me, that's a big fat lie, but I'm going to try. Um, Bear Town. I read um, in an earlier video, if you're following me at all, uh, or if you've watched any of my other videos, I said that I knew they weren't in Canada, but I wasn't sure how far away they were, or where they were, or if they were in the United States. But then that was silly, because they talk about the currency that they use. Let me find it. Hold, please. Okay, I had to look it up because it was taking too long to look through the book. Um, they use kroner. So, this story takes place in Sweden, which makes perfect sense considering that's where the author lives. Really wasn't that hard to figure out. Anyway, this book was very good. It had, um, there is a violent act that takes place. So, if you are not a person who likes to read, um, anything controversial and violent, then you might not like this book. It was very well written. Um, one thing I love most about this author is his writing style is beautiful. He is very concise and says a lot and has a lot of emotion in very few words. And that is my favorite kind of writing. I love descriptive fluffy writing, but I like it even better when you can say it concisely. Anyway, this story is about a town who, uh, they're just kind of a small, sad little town. Most of their industry is gone. Um, there are men that work in the factory and there's bars and there's just kind of not a lot going on and the town is just kind of dying. And so they're hanging their hopes on a young 
uh, 16, 17 year old uh, boys hockey team to kind of breathe life back into this town because they have the finals coming up and they've grown to be quite a competitive good hockey team. So the uh, I really don't want to say a whole lot more than that. The violent act that happens happens um, with a member of the hockey team and another member of the town and um, it involves the coach in a roundabout sort of way and <clears throat> sorry choking on spit um, it tears the town apart and it makes people choose um, hockey over humans and it's ugly it gets really ugly there is a sequel to this book called us against them i always forget i think that's what it's called and i'm listening to it on audiobook i'm not that into it and it could be because i'm listening versus reading um, but this book is very readable it's um does this one have a book club thing at the end no it does not um here, I'm going to hold this up. This is the one, Us Against You, not them, you. So that's the one I am currently listening to on, I checked it out from my library. Um, if you have the Libby app, uh, that's the one that, I'm in Arizona, that's the one my local library uses. Um, you can check out books that way. So the audiobook was available, so I snapped it right up. And I am only like an hour and a half maybe in, so... I have hope that it will get better. Also, I'm listening to like four other books, so maybe I should stop doing that, but I'm not going to. Okay, the next book I wanna talk about, I finished um, last week. It is called The Woman in the Window. It is going to be made into a motion picture. I'm so excited. So I looked it up and it was due to be released into the theaters um, May, I think, something like that. Then it got pushed back. Maybe, I think it was actually before May, then it got pushed back to May, and then it got pushed back again. So now, who knows? I'm, I have a feeling they'll release it as um, a, a book, you or a book, a movie you can buy. Sorry. A movie that you can buy and watch at home which we've done and it's kind of cool I mean you still you're paying like 20 bucks 25 bucks but you'd pay 50 if you're in the theaters I guess so not that horrible but anyway this book was amazing um, AJ Finn right there for me to read but I couldn't do it backwards um, this one was like plot twist plot twist plot twist kind of it was really good um, so the story, I don't know if I read the back of it. I'm just going to talk about it, though. So the woman in the window is a lady who is suffering from agoraphobia. And you want to know, like, right away, why? What happened to her? What happened to her? Because it was because of an event that happened in her life. Well, you don't find out until, like, 300 pages in what happened to her. But it, the author does a great job of keeping you hanging and all that. So she is separated from her family and I can't uh, say why without ruining the story for you but um, she's separated from them talks to them um, but doesn't see them in person that's all I'm gonna say about that so she um, has some communication with some people in an agoraphobia group that she's on oh by the way she's a doctor she's a psychologist or a psychiatrist psychologist I think and um, which means she knows a lot about what she's going through. And in her agoraphobia group, she's known as her, uh, her site name is the doctor's in. And so people ask her questions about what she's going through, what they're going through. And so she finds some comfort in that. And she watches what's going on all around her neighborhood and obsessively so like if somebody moves into the house across the street and I think she's in again I don't know where it's not in Sweden I don't know where this I think it's like New York or something but she um where she's in like a fancy four-story home like right on the street and um there she's talking about like million dollar homes multi-million dollar homes so she watches neighbors move in and out of homes across the street, next to her, all those things. And she 
looks up online and finds out all about them and kind of that way um, keeps track of what's going on in the world around her. So um, she becomes kind of obsessed with a family across the street because of some things that are going on that she sees. And as you can see here, it's not a secret. I'm not ruining anything if I tell you that she actually is a witness to a crime and goes through um, all kinds of doubt and people are doubting her um, because of what the police find out and it's really good. She has a big problem with drinking and taking her medication and so she's um, becoming less and less believable. The story is really, really good. I would so recommend reading this book um, if I were giving it gold teacher stars, I would give this a five out of five. It's really good. And I would recommend reading it before watching the movie just because the book's always better. Um, sometimes though that makes the movie kind of a letdown, but that's okay. Anyway, great book. So those are the two that I had read and kind of promised I would talk about, but just hadn't yet. I've moved on. I'm reading um, The Silent Sister right now by Diane Chamberlain. That was one I mentioned in my What's in the Box part two, I believe, video. And um, sorry, my hair's blowing all around because I have a fan going back here because it's like 127 today. Anyway, um, <sighs> Diane Chamberlain, I got two books by her. I'm reading one of them, The Silent Sister, and it's also really good. So I'll do a wrap up on that one um, eventually too. I've been trying to catch up on all my classes that I'm taking. I took a uh, class again today that was district mandated. Um, and that was a two and a half hour class. So I had that this morning and then I had my hair appointment. So now I'm just kind of coming back home and it's weird being out and like coming back home. It's so sad, but that's life. So I'm going to end the vlog here for now. I know this wasn't super eventful vacuums and books, but that is my life right now. And I'm not even all that sorry because reading is great. So Stay positive about the world we live in. Send out good vibes and prayers. We sure do need it. If you found anything even remotely entertaining about this vlog, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I'd love to keep seeing you here on my channel. Thank you. Goodbye.